Hey guys, Mike Build. Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Today, I want to show you guys this 12 volt solar power system that I put together. This is going to be the second video of a 12 volt solar power system that I've built on the channel. The first one was more of a beginner video as well as a budget friendly system. So we only had a 500 watt inverter. I believe we had a 20 amp charge controller and a 100 amp hour battery. This is going to be what I call the intermediate stage of the 12 volt solar power system. So we are using a much bigger inverter a little bit bigger, a little bit better solar charge controller, as well as a way bigger battery. We also added a Bluetooth shunt that we can connect to our phone to monitor the whole system. That way we can see the capacity, the amps going in and out and all that good stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I built this. This system here, you can build yourself in less than an hour and it costs around $1,200. The good thing about this system is it is very easily scalable. So you can easily add a better charge controller. You can add a better inverter. You can also put more batteries on this if you want to. But if you end up using these components or similar spec components, this system is very capable of powering fridges, window AC units, computers, TVs, anything intermediate up to 2000 watts with this inverter. So this would be a really good system if you really just wanna power a various amount of appliances. I've even powered a mini split with this and it worked perfect. So we're gonna take you guys all the way to the beginning when this thing's completely bare and we're gonna build it from scratch. And I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how I did this. You can very easily take the same architecture and modify it to your needs. If you don't need as much of an inverter or maybe you wanna use a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller battery, you can easily adjust how you build this to suit your needs. This is on a hand cart, and the reason it's on a hand cart is because you can stand it straight up. You can tuck this thing in a corner if you're not gonna be using it for a while, and it just stays out of the way. It also makes laying out everything very easy, and I really like that because if you ever have to troubleshoot or mess with any of the wiring, it's all right there in front of you, all laid out nice and neat. No chances of short circuits or anything like that. So, let's get to work. And just to prove how capable this thing is, we're actually gonna try to see if we can start this air compressor. So we're gonna plug this thing in. This is a very big inductive load and most inverters will have trouble starting this, but we'll see if this cheap Harbor Freight inverter can actually handle it. No problem guys, just like that. So here are all the components we're gonna to use to build our solar power system. So for the inverter, we're gonna be using this 2000 watt Jupiter pure sine wave inverter. For the charge controller, we're gonna use this battery power 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller. We can do up to 100 volts of input from solar panels to this and it will do 30 amps of output. It's MPPT, it also has Bluetooth so we can monitor the wattage and all that good stuff. For the battery, we're gonna use this Redodo 12 volt 300 amp hour battery and that's gonna give us 3,800 watt hours of capacity. And then in order to connect everything up, we have a series of four gauge cables that's gonna go to the inverter. We have our main power wires right here that are gonna go to the battery. We have our solar input leads right here with MC4s to connect our solar panels. We have a DC circuit breaker for the charge controller that's gonna act as a switch as well as a safety mechanism. We have a 250 amp fuse for the inverter connection. We also have some bus bars to make all the connections easier. And to monitor the whole system, we have one of these Victron smart shunts. So this is kind of a nice piece to add to your system in order to easily monitor the state of charge of everything because this battery unfortunately does not have Bluetooth. I also have a small pile of little screws to mount everything to our mounting surface. And then to connect the battery to the system, I made this little pigtail using an Anderson plug and that's gonna to connect to the battery and allow us to plug everything in as well as disconnect everything when we're not using the system. That way if we wanna store this thing, we can do it safely with everything de-energized. Now, as far as mounting all the equipment, we're gonna use a hand truck cart that has a piece of plywood bolted to it. Just a cheap hand cart from Harbor Freight, nothing crazy there. And the reason I like using a hand cart is because these are easy to store. Since everything's vertical, you can very easily stick this in a corner, but it also makes everything very easy to roll around because these can support a ton of weight and make it super simple to move around because that battery is pretty heavy. That's about 60 pounds by itself. And we're also gonna have plenty of space to lay all the components out and make everything visually easy to connect. So that's kind of an overview of all the components we're gonna use. Now we're gonna start connecting everything up. First component we're gonna mount is gonna be our charge controller. So I'm gonna kind of line it up right here, install it with two screws. That's the nice thing about using plywood is it makes it very, very easy to put your components wherever y'all wanna put them. All right, next up's gonna be our power inverter. I'm gonna put it to where the outlet is pointing up and the terminals are pointing down. That'll make it easier to connect everything and make it everything a little bit neater. There we go, just like that, nice and clean. Next, we're gonna take our two bus bars and get those mounted, and this will make connecting all the wiring and everything very easy. That way you're not having to stack a bunch of cables on each lug, you can just wire each individual component to this. So I'm probably gonna put these probably right about here. Now that we have our bus bars mounted and our main components mounted, we can start running some of the wiring from our components to the bus bars. We're gonna start on the positive side of the inverter, so we have our mega fuse here. I already had made our little leads.
Make sure your leads are nice and snug because loose leads will create heat and you do not want that in your solar power system. Let's we'll snug those guys up like that. Nice. We have our negative connection for the inverter here already kind of bent it into a good shape to where it's gonna fit on here really nicely. Just like that. What I will say as well is it makes it a lot easier to make all your connections fit really nicely after you mount your components. So always mount all your components first. Once you know where everything's gonna be and the kind of the layout you're gonna do, then make all your cables kind of custom fit for your setup. That way you end up with a nice clean layout and everything looks really nice. Now we're gonna install our charge controller wiring. So we have six gauge wires for the charge controller, which is kind of overkill, but I'd rather have them a little bigger than you need. That way you don't have any issues with current carrying. And then we're also gonna put a 50 amp circuit breaker. Now my experience with these circuit breakers is the cheaper ones, tend to be overrated. Like this will probably not handle 50 amps. It'll probably pop a little earlier than 50 amps, but it also does work really well as a kill switch, which I really like. And it's just gonna get inserted into the terminals of the charge controller. All right, we're gonna take our negative wire, do the same thing. Look at that, looking nice. Next thing we're gonna install is gonna be our shunt. I do highly recommend you put some sort of shunt or voltage meter or current monitoring device on your solar power system. That way you can monitor how much power you're actually using as well as determine how much battery life you have remaining in your battery. Keep in mind, you can buy batteries that have Bluetooth BMSs in them. That will kind of give you all that information. But personally, I'd always like to have a standalone current shunt that can be programmed separately from the battery and you can set this however you want, the parameters you want, and all that good stuff. All right, the last two things we gotta put on is gonna be our main battery lead for the whole unit, and then our solar panel connections to the charge controller. We can go ahead and install our covers, so we don't accidentally short nothing. Bam. All right, last but not least, we can go ahead and put our battery on the cart. So the battery's gonna just sit on the foot here at the bottom, just like that, kind of center it up. And then to make it real easy to connect to the cart, we're just gonna use a, just a cheap ratchet strap just to make it easy. It'll be plenty secure. And there we go, guys. We got our ratchet strap on there nice and secure. The battery's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna move around. All we gotta do now is take our battery pigtail, connect it to our battery. And then we can take everything and plug it in. I'm gonna verify before I plug it in, all my polarity is correct, everything looks good. And there we go, guys, all connected up. Let's see if we can turn our inverter on. Yep, that works. Close the circuit breaker for the charge controller. Nice. Now I'm gonna to go to our Victron app, get the Victron shunt all set up. And there we go, we are all set now. I'm gonna to have to fully charge the battery to make sure this is set properly. Once the battery is fully charged, this is set at 100. I've set it to 300 amp hours and then we're gonna know exactly how much power we're using as well as how long the load will be able to be ran. So if you guys have made it this far in the video, this is everything you need to know to build this system. As y'all saw, it took very little time, very little tools, just a little bit of equipment and you have a very capable solar power system. Now, one more thing I am gonna add on here that I didn't mention before is a 30 amp charger. This is an AC charger, so you can plug it into the wall. What that's gonna allow you to do is charge this thing if you don't wanna use any solar or if the sun is not out you can still keep your system charged. You can also plug this into a generator. So if you're using the system like during a power outage and you either don't have your solar panel set up or there's just no sun to charge the battery, you can just plug this thing into a generator to top off your battery. And there we go. Now we have a 400 watt AC charger. So if you take our cord right here, I can plug it right into the unit, turn the unit on. And if we go to our app, I can see we're charging with 28 amps. And that's it guys. This is gonna be my go-to solar power system for camping, for backup for anything small that I need to power, nothing crazy big. It's very easy to roll around still, very portable. You can very easily roll this thing around, take it wherever you need to take it, on the campsite, maybe in the field doing some work. If you need to power some tools or charge some batteries, anything where you need 2000 watts, you just want a backup system, or if you want to permanently connect it to solar and just use this to power pretty much anything you want in your house, just to mess around and learn about solar. I think in another video, what we're going to try to do is we're going to buy a cheap window AC unit, connect this to that and connect this to 
450 watts of solar panels and we're going to be able to use this to power a window ac full time that way you can cut down your heating and cooling bill i think that'd be the easiest way to actually save some money using this setup but other than that you could store this in a closet somewhere unplug the battery from the anderson connector and this thing will not self-discharge or nothing and then maybe once every couple of months pull it out connect it to the charger connect it to some solar panels top everything up make sure the system's good to go for a power outage or you know whatever you want to use it for i really enjoyed building this system guys it was super easy it took us no time at all i will put everything you see on this cart in the description if you guys want to go check it out for yourselves get some more information on the components we used personally this is what i would go for for a mid-tier solar power system in another video we're actually going to build a max effort 12 volt solar power system because i have so many 12 volt batteries i think that'd be really fun we're going to use a way bigger inverter bigger charge controller everything's going to be bigger and beefier but this is i think a good mix between power cost and portability that's going to do it for this video you guys let me know what y'all think about this if there's any extra details i need to add into the video to help you guys at home to understand what's going on let me know i don't mind helping at all if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments let me know about this build let me know if you guys have done similar builds and what you guys would change what you guys would keep the same i guess that's it share your thoughts in the comments thank y'all so much for watching and i will catch y'all in the next one